What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with my unboxing and first look at the all-new 21.5-inch iMac. Now, the big news here is the much thinner design, which now incorporates Ivy Bridge processors, USB 3.0, and the optional Fusion Drive. Now, the version I have here is the standard configuration, which starts you off at $1299. So that gets you a 2.7 gigahertz quad-core i5 processor with 8 gigs of RAM. You also get a 1 terabyte, 5400 RPM HDD, an NVIDIA GeForce GT 640M, with 512 megs of dedicated memory. Now, for only $200 more, you can bump that up to a 2.9 gigahertz uh, quad-core i5 and a 650M uh, GPU versus the 640M. You can also customize from there by adding a Core i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and a one terabyte Fusion Drive, which combines a 128 gig SSD with a traditional one terabyte hard disk drive. Now, unfortunately, the 21.5 inch does not have user accessible RAM slots. Only the 27 inch model does that. So if you want to upgrade your RAM, you're going to have to do it through Apple. Now, the packaging for the new iMac really stands out. So instead of the standard square box, we have this triangular box, which makes it much more stable for transport. They've also designed it so that the box completely opens up rather than requiring you to sort of lift it or hoist it out of the box from the top. So all you have to do is cut the tape along the back and the box will fold open uh, forward. And inside you'll find the cocooned iMac wrapped in lots of styrofoam and plastic wrapping. The top houses the accessory package. So this includes the standard Apple Bluetooth keyboard and the Magic Mouse. The keyboard is unchanged. We still have a solid aluminum unibody design with a power button on the right side and the battery compartment on the left side, which you can open with a coin. The keyboard features all the standard Apple keys and Mac OS X function keys at the top, such as screen brightness, mission control, launcher, media controls, and more. We also find our literature packet containing our quick start guide, some warranty information, and a set of Apple stickers. You also get an Apple branded microfiber cleaning cloth for cleaning that huge glass display. Now getting back to the Mac, we just need to free it from the box by sliding the whole thing out. And you can see neatly tucked into the styrofoam behind the iMac is the power cable, which has also been slightly redesigned, and we'll take a look at that a bit later. Now with the styrofoam removed, we have that familiar envelope protecting the entire iMac. To free it, just peel the tabs at the back of the iMac, and that those will then fall down. You kind of have to peel it away from around the uh, pedestal, and you just lift it up. Now, we're not done yet. We still have plastic covering the front panel. We just have to peel this along the sides. Uh, and once we're done with that, we can peel the entire plastic panel away. And also, we have another panel or another piece of plastic protecting the pedestal. Now, the standout design element is that 5 millimeter thin bezel, which creates the illusion of a razor-thin iMac. But as you can see along the back, you can see it sort of bows out. And that, of course, houses all of the computer components. Now, this is 80% thinner than the outgoing iMac, or at least the edges. But to do this, they've made some design changes, such as eliminating the optical drive and moving the SD card slot to the back. They've also thinned out the display assembly by 45%. Now, in most ways, the design is still very familiar. We have that all-aluminum unibody design with a pivoting pedestal and an edge-to-edge -edge glass panel. At the bottom, we'll find that chin design uh, with the Apple logo toward the center. And like before, that chin houses the air vents and down firing speakers. They're stereo speakers left and right, which as you can see are milled into the edge of the bezel. And it's actually very nice to look at, even though you probably are not gonna look at the bottom of the iMac too often. Now behind the pedestal, you'll find the intake vent or the air intake vent. Missing now from the previous generation is an air vent at the top of the display. Now, at the rear of the display, you also find the Apple logo, which once again houses the Wi-Fi antennas so that they can function through the metal body. Now, at the top, we'll find our set of dual microphones, one at the top edge of the display and one right behind it on the back of the iMac. This is very similar to the Retina MacBook Pros, which also feature these dual microphones for enhanced uh, voice recognition. Now, on the front of the display, we'll find a FaceTime HD camera along with an ambient light sensor and LED indicator. Now, in terms of I.O., this is where we'll find the SD XC card slot, which is admittedly a difficult location to access frequently. Now, next to that is a single headphone jack, which also supports optical audio output. Now, as you can see, they've eliminated the dedicated auxiliary input, although the headphone jack does support Apple's headphones. So for example, if you have a microphone on your Apple earbuds, it will work through the headphone jack. We also get four USB 3.0 ports, which is new to the iMac line, and two Thunderbolt ports, as well as an Ethernet jack. On the opposite side, we'll find the power button. 
Behind the pedestal, we'll find the power supply, and below that is a Kensington lock. Now, the power cable has been slightly redesigned and angled to accommodate the thinner profile. Connecting the power supply is easy, and as you can see, the iMac moves freely uh, through that uh, cable management system. Now quickly looking at the bottom of the pedestal, we have an anti-skid rubber foot. This is also where you can find the regulatory information, model number, and your serial number. Now the display resolution is unchanged, so we still have a 1920 by 1080 screen, but the LCD IPS display is now laminated to the glass. This creates less light refraction through the glass and better off-access viewing, so it kind of looks like everything is sitting right on the glass. There's no barrier between you and the display. They've also applied an anti-reflective coating, which reduces glare by setting 5%, which doesn't completely eliminate glare, but makes it much more manageable. So although this is not a retina display, the color and optical quality of the display looks very similar to the retina MacBook Pros and dramatically improves upon the last generation iMac. So that's going to do for me guys in this first look at the new iMac. Definitely a very impressive design with a beautiful display. They've eliminated some features like that, the optical drive. I don't think it's a big deal because I never used it. So I'm thinking a lot of people are no longer using it as well. And I think the biggest issue for me is the positioning of the SD card slot, but I'm sure that's something I'll get used to. But at $12.99, I think this is a great value in the Mac lineup. Uh, so you get a great display, great design, a lot of features, impressive hardware. For $12.99, I think this is your best bargain. So that's going to do for me guys in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.